G'day everyone and welcome back to 2020. We are back here in class for 2020 uh, and we are about to crack into Maths Methods Year 12 now, so uh, Unit 3 and Unit 4. Lots of good stuff happening here and lots to do, so let's not waste a moment. On sector here, and if you're watching from somewhere else around the world, I apologise that you don't have such a good program as ours, but sector here is fantastic. We've got plenty of stuff on here. Now, you won't be able to get access, sorry, but you'll notice here a bit of a communication board that I've got there just so I can put up stuff as, they, as it comes about. Um, and then if I scroll down here further, you'll notice I've got course outline, assessment outline, syllabus, glossary. That's this one here. You can get it off the SCARS website as well. I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, you'll notice down here there's a whole lot of material, huge amounts of material, past tests and the like. Please never tell me that you haven't got enough to do. There is a stack load that I've loaded up on there, so there is plenty for you to dive into and look. Now the thing I want to do today as a starting thing is to look into our syllabus. So I'm opening up this one and you guys have got a copy of it there in front of you. Alright, let's get back to the top here. So what is so great about this syllabus? Well, there's a couple of things I want to point out. The first thing I really want to point out is this year, in 2020, front cover, over the page, right down the bottom here, you will notice that the first thing it says is important information. Then it says, this syllabus is effective from 1st of January 2020. That means if you've got last year's syllabus, there might be some changes. I haven't put them side by side yet to look at every single little dot point. Uh, I know of some, but I'm going to make a guess that there might be a few little things we've got to change. Either or, it's an important document to know where to go, where to find it, and what to look for in it. Now, I cut out a whole lot of stuff in the front end of this, just so I didn't photocopy as much, but it is here on set before you and on SCARS' website. Let's have a quick look at what's there. Uh, contents page. Uh, an overview of all the maths courses, the rationale behind the maths courses, the aims of the courses, and the organisation of this unit. Now, Unit 3 and Unit 4 here, it's not a big issue that we're missing this page because in the part that I have photocopied is all the syllabus points for the stuff we need to learn. Now, the organisation of the course. You'll notice Unit 3 here, three major topics. Unit 4, three major topics. Okay, so six topics across the year. Right? And it tells you a little bit about each of these topics, a short little introduction about what's going on there, Unit 3, Unit 4. Okay? Don't get too worried because when we get into the syllabus part, there's much, much more to know. Okay, so just below, my screen's not working, there we go. Just below there, it has a whole lot of extra stuff, uh, general capabilities, literacy, numeracy, IT, ethical understanding, lots of good important stuff there. For the specifics of maths, not great, but they're there, have a read of them. Let's keep scrolling. Now, this is where we get to the important stuff, and this is where in your booklet, this is where we start Unit 3. Unit 3, general description of what's going on in Unit 3. And then we get into the key things, the learning outcomes, and the unit content. Now that, that is really where it starts. Okay? This is the stuff, these dot points, of what you will be assessed on at the end of the year. So if you discard everything else in the, in the syllabus, these are the things to look at. Now please don't discard everything else, but this is the critical thing. You need to understand what every single part of this is telling, asking you to do, the types of questions you can be asked, understanding you need. This is the critical thing. Okay? I know I'm emphasising that, but this is the critical thing. You'll notice here it's got topic 3.1. Remember that in unit 3 there's three topics, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. .3. In unit 4, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. So there's six topics in total. They're broken up here uh, and then subheadings. You can see how it goes. We scroll on through. There's a whole lot going on here. A whole lot going on. Uh, differentiation, we did some of that last year, but we do a bit more again. Second derivative, even more again. We're into integrals or anti-differentiation. We did a little bit of that last year, but we do more fancy stuff. Look at that. Look at that notation. Uh, definite integrals, that's area under the curve kind of idea. Fundamental theorem, applications, lots of stuff going on there. I'm not going to go through all of it. Clearly, that's what the year's for. 
Let's keep scrolling on through. Now you can see there's lots and lots and lots of dot points, and that's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. There's unit three, that's the end of unit three. Then we get into unit four. Same setup, three subparts if you like, uh, and then headings below that. Logarithmic function, continuous variables, normal distribution, interval estimates for population. Lots of lots of stats in this course. Really most of it is, is functions and stats, the majority of this course. So we scroll on through all of that now, not bypassing that uh, because it's not important, it's very important, but we work through that across the year. This page here, school-based assessment, this is where you figure out what am I being assessed on, how am I being assessed. Okay, great to learn it, the assessment part's important. Responses, a response is essentially a test. See it as a test, it's give you the questions, you do your best, give them back to me, I mark. You know, nothing new there. Investigations. Now, investigations this year are a little different from last year. Now, what we need to do is the investigations have to be on content that you have been taught. Whereas previously, we could look a little wider and look for skills that you maybe haven't been taught in the course, teach some of it to you, allow you to investigate, and then assess. Now, it's stuff that's on the course. Okay, so coming from those dot points above. I'm not, I'm not the greatest fan of it, but it is what it is, I've got to deal with it. Examination, 40% for exams, 15% first semester, 25 second semester. Second semester will have some first semester content, unit three content in it. So at the end of your two exams, they're roughly 20, 20% for first and second semester work, unit three, unit four work. Yeah. And then the waste exam. Waste exam is separate again, so yeah. this is talking about our internal assessment, right? Then all of this, all of this comes together, and I give SCARSA one mark and one grade for you. Yes. Okay? So I give a mark and a grade for each student to SCARSA. You guys will then go and do your waste exams, and the waste exam is the only exam that everyone in Year 12 Methods 2020 does. They use that waste exam mark to look at how each individual school has done and move things around to suit, to balance things out. Once that's done, they then scale subjects. That's when they're saying, well, did the method students do as well as the physics students, as well as the human bio students, as well as the phys ed studies, as well as the English? And that's where they scale courses to balance the difficulty, the relatively diffi relative difficulty of subjects here. And this for the waste exam, is it just 50, 50, unit three, unit four? Exactly, for all of, your, all of your courses, not just maths, all of the courses, the waste exam is over the entire year 12. Okay, so it's not one and two. No, no. It, the only thing with units one and two, you've got to so remember there's a lot of skills in there that you need for three and four, but they're not directly assessed. I mean, you know, you're going to have to add two numbers together in your exam, but nowhere in here does it say students must be able to add two numbers. You know, but that's an understood skill, an implied skill. Yep. Does scaling very much from the year? That, that's a difficult question to answer. The short answer is no. And the reason for that, as we'll get into more of our stats later in the year, that's a good little segue actually, is that when you take a large population, things don't vary much. Okay. If I took a sample, I'm diving into stuff already. If I took a sample of 10 students from here, I might by chance choose every year seven that's this tall. I might choose every year 12 that's this tall. Just by chance, they happen to be the ones walking by that I grabbed and, and measured their height. So the, the answer there may be quite varied. But if I took a sample of 300 students, then that estimate's gonna be much, much better to the population's estimate. Now in your case, when you think there's about 15,000 students each year that sit ATAR exams, over 15,000 people, does it vary much? No. But there is some variance based on the difficulty of exams and what happens throughout the year. Yes, there is variance, but not all because of the large numbers. Okay, there you go. We're already in the teaching phase of it. Right, school-based assessment. Very important to know what you're going to be uh, assessed on. There's things here about the assessment now I must include when I get that to you. That will have all these things so you'll know what you're being assessed on, when you're being assessed, what parts of the course it's assessing, all of that. Scroll on here. Grading, A, B, C, D, and E. 
look, that's nothing spectacular. You've, you've had those sort of ratings for you know since year seven or even before. Um, and there's some words that, that match it, but let's not get too worried about that for now. We've got a long way to go before we get to there. ATAR course exam. This is really important. This is a really important page. Not so much that little bit there, but the next page is really important. What this exam design brief does, it tells you and it tells the examiners how they should write the exam in year 12, the waste exam. Okay? When, when the examiners go to start uh, writing an exam, they don't go and say, hey, uh, Alan Sadler, what did you put in uh, Unit 3 book? And, uh, oh, that's a good little question there. I'll, I'll do that. They don't go looking at Alan Sadler's book. Sorry, Alan. Um, they don't go looking at O.T. Lee's book. They don't go looking at Greg Hines' book. They don't go looking at anyone's book. They have an exam design brief that says, this is the stuff that you need to know. This is the format of the exam. And it's all linked to those dot points there. Okay? Now, obviously the books, don't get me wrong, the books are our learning tool. Right? They're very good, very good. But just because Sadler decided to put it in the book doesn't mean that it's in the course. Just because he didn't put it in the book doesn't mean it's not in the course. This has got to be our reference point. Okay? That's Sadler's view of how he would teach the course. It's not necessarily the syllabus. And remember right at the start, I mentioned that this syllabus is for 2020 onwards. These books were written long before 2020. Okay? So you've always got to refer to the syllabus for your do I need to know that, is that important sort of question. Okay? Uh, look, very good book. Sadler, very good. O.T. Lee, very good. Greg Hine, very good. John Clark, very good. Very good books. Very, very good. <laughs> but be aware that that's their view of how they would teach the course and the things they think are important, not necessarily the examiner's view. Okay? So, here, what does it say? It tells us about the time and what's uh, allowed for each exam. It tells us about the sections of the exam. Now, when I was doing this with my spec class just before, the spec percentages of the exam are all about the same, 10, 15, 20%. But look at this, calculus and logarithmic function is more than half the exam. So more than half of your work and study and revision and all should be around calculus and logarithmic functions. The other two major areas, they're only kind of 25 or so percent each. You know? So that's the key focus of the course, calculus and logarithmic function. That's where 50 to 60 percent of the marks in your exam are going to be. So logically, put 50 to 60 percent of your effort into that part of the course. Right? Now, all of my comments, I should mention this, maybe I should have said this at the top, all of my comments around this syllabus, how it's set up, how it works, and all of that side of things, all of my comments, you can directly transfer to any course that you do. Certainly the ATAR courses. You can the general courses, it won't have about exams and the like in it, but general courses work as well. But all ATAR courses will have the same setup. You should, even if your teachers don't, be printing off this or having a copy on your desktop, reading it, referring to it, knowing what's there. Okay? This is almost as important as the learning. Right? You wouldn't turn up to a basketball game not knowing the rules of basketball. Well, you might, but you're going to, you're going to do really poor. Okay? You don't turn up to a, a, a polo game with your greyhound, do you? No, you go to the greyhound track to race your greyhound, you take your horse to go and play polo. Right? Turn up with the right skills. So here, this is important, really important. Over the page, then it tells you about section one and section two of the exam, and what they're looking for in those sections. The number of questions, the split up. You don't need to worry too much about this, because this is exactly what we do in all of our exams anyway. The split, the timing, everything uh, is the same. Okay? But have a read of what, what this is saying and what sort of things the examiners are going to be looking for. We've got plenty of time to get through that. Now, in your booklet, I didn't put in uh, Appendix 1. Okay, I didn't feel the need to photocopy it out. It's here. What it is, it's the grade related descriptor. So it tells you that if you are going to get an A grade at the end of the year for this course, these are the sorts of things through your work that you need to be shown. Okay? If you're going to get a B grade, 
then these are the sorts of things. And what you often find is the key word chooses effective, translates, attempts to analyse, uh, follows mathematical convention. Those sort of words are the ones as you move from the A, the B, the C, that are changing. Uh, so those are the words you know, that, are, that are generally changing. Okay? Uh, we get further down and we get into the, no one's going to be down here, but does not meet any of the requirements. So if you don't meet this, then you're in the E grade. No one's going to be there, don't worry. We'll, we'll be fine. The last part, the last part is also very important. Get on. This here, the glossary. Now, I tell you what, when I went through school, uh, I'm, I'm assuming there was a glossary to the back of the syllabus. I don't know that I ever knew it was there. Maybe I did, but any word that is in here, any word that's listed down here, the examiners and myself can assume that you know, understand, and can apply. So I don't have to explain to you what the chain rule is. I don't have to say, given the chain rule, differentiate the following. I can just say, using the chain rule, differentiate the following. Right? I don't need to tell you what it is. Now you're probably saying it's on the formula sheet. Well, of course it is, yes. But I don't have to tell you what these words mean. Right? I can make the assumption, because it's in the glossary, I can make the assumption that all of these words that are there, you understand, you know, and your understanding of the word is this one right here. Okay? Now you might say, you know, for some reason, oh, I don't really agree with that, that definition. I've seen it written like this, or I've seen that. Great, good on you. Don't care, because this is the definition that SCARSA have come up with. So that's the definition that this course works from. Okay? So you should understand these words. Now, of course, some of the words you'll already understand, but some of them you'll look at and go, I have no idea what that is. Well, that's okay. We'll get through that during the course. Uh, there's two or three pages of them. You can see they're broken up into Unit 3, where it's gone? Unit 3 and Unit 4. Uh, lost it. There is a break there between Unit 3 and Unit 4 um, for different words and what they mean and which part of the course they apply to. I would like you to, and I'll do that here in the classroom, but I would like you to, during the year, have this to hand pretty much all the time. I would also like you to, as we do some teaching and learning, and as you figure out, oh look, we've just covered that section right there, you highlight it. Now when you come to a test, you can at one glance go, alright, so I'm good there, good there, okay, oh, I don't, okay, I've, got to, I've got to work on that section because I didn't highlight it. So I'm not sure about that. There's something in there that I'm not sure about. I've got to ask, I've got to find questions, I've got to see what I can do. If everything's highlighted, that says you're in a pretty good spot. Okay? And then you can sort of generally revise the whole topic. I will here in the room somewhere, I'll find a space somewhere, not sure where, put up a uh, copy of the syllabus. And before the test, a week or two before the test, we'll read through each syllabus point. <laughs> And you guys will go, yep, yep, you definitely covered that. Yes, I understand. I, I, I know where questions are that test that. Yep, I'm happy with that. And I'll highlight it. Anything we don't highlight says to me, that's an area I've got to reteach, go over, find extra examples, etc. A lot of information there. I, I understand a lot of information, but a very, very important document. The full document is on Sector and also on SCARS' website. Please be careful about the 2020. I don't know if other courses of yours have a rewrite on the syllabus for 2020. Check that out. Check SCARS' website. Look on the inside cover. Okay. Have we got questions? Yeah. How long is this? So we've only got 26 weeks. Yeah, so around that. How the unit is going to be split? Like, when do we start unit four? So basically, the semester break, so your exam in first semester will be all unit three. Right. We will get through Unit 3 pretty neatly in first semester of around 14 weeks or so. And then when we come back from exams in about week 6 of Term 2, roughly, uh, that's when we start Unit 4. Now, going on previous years, uh, and I know this is not spec, but uh, spec generally I've finished the course four or five weeks early. Right? Methods tends to take a little longer, so you will find early on that I'm pushing you guys to get through stuff. Right? But it is for your benefit because then towards the end we can finish three or so weeks earlier, allowing a revision back into the term th uh, unit three stuff to find the stuff we don't need. So in both methods and spec, I aim for about three to four weeks early to allow 
practice for exams and stuff like that. It'll depend how it goes. Obviously, I've got to moderate it to your pace and where we're at and all of that sort of thing. Yeah. And also, when do we start level functions? Uh, 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 almost straight away. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, there's a few things, and then we get straight into it. Yeah, it's not far away. Actually, no, I like. Uh, is it start, start a unit four? I might have to check that. No, sorry, start a unit four. Sorry. Decibels, uh, earthquakes, Richter scale. Okay. Yes, we will. Now, um, I might sign off from this video because there are going to be a lot of questions that maybe aren't really relevant to you somewhere around the world. Thank you for joining us, though. I really appreciate it. Um, Ned, if you can uh, finish me up there and uh, switch me off. See you later. See you in the next video. Uh -huh.